Welcome to DXB Today and big old focus for us tonight. Well, you might have noticed a bit of traffic around town throughout this week. Why? Beauty World Middle East down at Dubai World Trade Center. It was massive. So we thought ourselves, we'd have ourselves a little bit of a beauty special for you tonight. So let's find out what is coming up. Coming up, our very beautiful Amy went to explore all the brilliant brands and pop-ups at the Beauty World Middle East. And where does it come when it comes to men's beauty in Dubai? Well, Ahmed checks out skin laundry and gets a little treatment himself. Uh, also, Salama Mohammed, exclusive interview coming your way a little later on. And we've got face yoga and Ayurvedic rituals and some serious workout all happening right here in studio. I know what they've done here. Yeah. I know what they've done here. <laughs> What's that, Tom? I know exactly what they've done here. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it, it they've gone that the powers that be the producers directors the executives the huge team of Conrad and said so we're having a beauty special so put two beauties on the sofa and then just a thorn in the middle of the roses is that right yeah I'm glad you recognize yeah. that too because me and Ash were talking about it before acceptance the show. is key I'm we're all gonna, just conspiring against you basically that's really kind <laughs> yeah so I'm just going to, to bow down to your better knowledge of this one well look I, I actually really consider Ash quite a beauty guru Oh, thank you. In the you. Middle East. Um, Ash, I mean, you are probably an expert on this realm. How do you think it's kind of changed and progressed over the years that you've been here? The beauty world has taken the world by storm, I would say, because they say that on average, women use up to 12 beauty products per day and spend up to 12,000 dirhams or more in a year on beauty products. Me personally, to be very honest, I have cut down on a few of my steps because I think it's excessive. Like, I mean, what is a toner? What does it do really? I have no <laughs> idea. My grandmother, who is 84 years old, from, from, from the time she remembers has washed her face with the bath soap, applied baby moisturizer, doesn't even know what Botox and filler is, and yet she has phenomenal skin. Mm. There is one thing money can't buy, and that is good genes. But of course, you know, you can get a little bit of help. There's always the Botox and fillers, which I myself am personally a little bit guilty of. What is your take on this? Are you pro aesthetic treatments or? Well, I heard you talk about face yoga which we're going to be delving a bit deeper into in the show but i had a buckle massage last week okay. which was a facial massage because apparently we hold a lot of tension in our face and uh, it helps sculpt as well so it's a more i guess natural way of so you're the upkeeping. more natural kind yes yeah, yeah. W what about you tom can you raise your eyebrows or <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much indeed for tuning in. Uh, it's been absolutely great. Um, didn't think I'd get a word in edgeways and quite right to. No, uh, no, I, 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 I might, yeah, my eyebrows are own. Um, they're a bit bushy and things like that. Mm. Uh, but uh, no, I haven't really bought into it. But listen, we will be acknowledging the fact that, you know, we're talking about a, boom, a booming beauty uh, industry for both men and women and for all ages as well. I think that that's the other uh, trend that we've seen. Uh, listen, uh, as I said, we've got two experts here on the sofa with us already, uh, and we're going to make that three now. Why? It's time to find out who today's guest co-host is. Hi, I'm Dr. Victoria Scott Lang, a consultant dermatologist. I can't wait to join the show to talk about all things skin and beauty. Yep, Dr. Victoria will join us right here in the hot seat in a few minutes. But before we get into all of that, Amy went down to Beauty World Middle East, the biggest beauty exhibition in the region to find out what's truly buzzing in the industry. So let's take a look. I'm here at Beauty World Middle East, where we're going to uncover the innovative beauty trends, meet the talented professionals, and explore the world of beauty. So what are we waiting for? Let's go. What it is that you do, and why are you here at Beauty World Middle East? So the, we are into the, this perfume business. We, when we launched, uh, I launched the brand Armaf, with Made in UAE. Everybody told me that these products are not gonna work. You can't launch Made in UAE products. It needs to be a French, because for fragrance is all about French. I said, no, I believe in my product and I would launch with Made in UAE. It's very important in this business to, the key factor is the fragrance. So to have a right fragrance with the right top knot 
a right middle note and the base note. Just to buy create opportunities for brands and help assist brands that are wanting to be established here? Absolutely. The vision and uh, the vision of the leader of Dubai, His Highness, is unbelievable. And that is one of the very key also reason for our success that we were very aligned with the vision of Dubai. Obviously, you're here at Beauty World Middle East. Why did you choose Beauty World Middle East to be the launch place for Miss Amaf? Yeah, Beauty World Middle East is, is one of the very important platform today. In Dubai, to have a beauty world, it's become very international and people love to come to this place. So, can you tell me a little bit about Yurang? Okay, Yurang is a natural and organic um, skincare brand from Korea. And um, the utmost important thing is the ingredients. They're carefully selected. And also, something special is that our products listen to music, you know, while they're being produced, so that we can give them a very good vibe for the customers to have when they're putting on products on their face. Okay, out of all of the beautiful oils and serums that we have here, the blue one really stands out to me. Is it going to make me look like Papa Smurfs? <laughs> no. These are like our one of our favorite products. Okay. One of the most selling products for year end. And the color is very natural. It comes from the chamomile. Oh, wow. Essential oil. But we found the chamomile essential oil that has the blue color. It's different from pansy. Okay. And you feel that, oh, I'm gonna, am I going to be Smurf family? But no, you'll see that. See? It's just like smoothly you know, goes around your hands and then later on it will just go down. Mm, oh, that smells amazing. It does. Oh, that's so nice. And these two are actually one of our best sellers as well. Okay. Iran. And I like using these two because like this is for like blemish care. This is for aging care. Okay. You know? So it was the polygon. This is for like more of blemish. Yeah, and both are hydrating. Yes which is very important, especially with in this part of the world where there's AC, there's heat, there's sand, there's dust. We really need to be hydrated. Yes, yes. Incredible. I've had an absolutely incredible time exploring all the different brands in the world of beauty. So whether you're a beauty content creator, a beauty entrepreneur, or someone that just likes to look a little bit glam, then Beauty World Middle East is definitely the place to be. I think Amy was pretty much in her element <laughs> there, isn't that right? I don't know if we, if we had any confirmation she's actually made her way back to the studio at any point or <laughs> she's been still there, there for the last four I days. I think she took yeah. an overnight back. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly picked up a few bags down there as well. Uh, lots of goodies, that's for sure. Right, on with today's show and today's guest co-host is a consultant dermatologist showcasing her expertise in medical uh, dermatology uh, amongst other disciplines. Known for her commitment uh, and skill in the field of skincare. It's a warm welcome to DXB today to Dr. Victoria joining us live here on the show. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Listen, it's, 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 a, world of, it's, it's a world of medicine, it's a world of, 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 of healthcare that is evolving all the time. But is our understanding of uh, the eternal elixir of eternal youth or our understanding of rejuvenation, is that changing all the time as well? Yeah, I think, I think there's definitely a trend now towards um, prejuvenation even. So people are trying to prevent that journey rapidly escalating far away from us and trying to really keep the skin in as good condition as possible, um, prevent sun damage, prevent premature aging is what we're looking at now. So not waiting till you've got the aging effects, but trying to prevent those in the first place. I mean, just on the question of sun damage, we live in quite a sunny country. Um, yeah. I mean, just how much of a concern? I mean, we, and, and I, the reason I asked this, I played a lot of cricket when I was growing up, etc. And we talked, we, we were always taught about different suns in different parts of the world. How damaging is the sun here in the UAE? I, it is very damaging. I think it's more to do with our lifestyle as well. Just chronic, being chronic exposure over long periods of time um, with the outdoor lifestyle that we all live here. 
Um, and usually people are very healthy here. We're out playing sport, we're on the beach. So it's that sort of cumulative damage effect that leads to premature damage and skin cancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we do see a lot of skin cancer in Dubai. Every day I'm seeing someone with skin cancer. Uh -huh. Yeah, usually, usually expats. Um, but I see all nationalities every day of the week with, with some sort of form of skin cancer. Yeah. Dr. Victoria, brands are constantly trying to come up with the best ingredient formulations to serve the consumer market in general, especially products like wrinkle reduction and anti-aging products have been pushed down our throats, or in this case, our pores, for so many years. What is your take on this? Can a cream actually reverse aging? Such a good question. Um, honestly, the market is so heavily saturated with a lot of ingredients that really do not work. Um, and I spend a lot of my time unpicking people's skincare routines, trying to streamline them um, and just really advising them of the ingredients we do know work. The treatment that we know has scientific basis for it is tretinoin, retinol, but you know, proper retinol strength. That does have really good evidence for it. Um, but probably on the flip side, prevention is better than cure so really we're going back to that sun damage situation sunscreen is your best friend um, really sort of trying to prevent those uv rays from damaging us over or over our lifetime mm. but if we're going to pick one ingredient i would go for tretinoin which is retinol um, it's not safe if you're pregnant or breastfeeding but um, yeah that would be my go-to mm. you mentioned to avoid the sun as much as you can but what about people who love to be out in the sun and get a nice bronzy glow mm. olive oil oh. <laughs> no maybe thank you dr Tom. <laughs> um, i would always encourage people to try and get a, a spray tan honestly mm -hmm. a bit of bronzer we've got so many good products we can create that look with um, any tan really is a sign of uv damage to the skin so that's what we're trying to avoid mm. We, we touched on it a bit earlier, uh, that was, you know, a lot of people have gone towards the Botox, the fillers to, you know, kind of fill that uh, that void of anti-aging. Mm. But but tell me, because I, I definitely have a more holistic approach to, to my skincare routine. Mm -hmm. um, I'm quite scared of mm -hmm. doing the, the other things. Yeah. What What is available now in the market for people like myself? There's so many things really, and it ranges from um, just simple skincare routines, like the, the key ingredients we mentioned. And then maybe I would say the next step for many people is Botox. That's like mm. still top worldwide, most popular non-invasive procedure. And you know, Botox done well by the right practitioner. There's really nothing to be afraid mm. of because it's such a safe treatment. It's been around for many, many years. Um, and then I guess we move on to other injectables like fillers, of course, Dubai is well known for having um, you know, popularity around fillers. Um, but I think the focus I've noticed more recently is improving the skin quality. Mm -hmm. So it's not just filling our face with something to replenish volume, it should be targeting the quality of the skin. Mm -hmm. So that's where your more holistic approach will come in. Um, following a healthy lifestyle for sure is important. Um, sleeping, um, eating well, not smoking, that'd probably be the top tip. Mm -hmm. Protecting yourself from sun. Um, and well, minimizing stress as much as possible. That's also important for the skin. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then lasers, I guess, is the other massive market here. Mm. Um, resurfacing lasers, skin tightening machines, microneedling, everything is really on the market now. I think I just ticked every single one of those boxes, so I might just leave it to you guys now <laughs> to do this one. <laughs> I mean, I love a bit of Botox and fillers. Nimi, I definitely recommend them. You should definitely okay. try it. It is fun. And it is a little bit addictive though. That's the only downside to it. So that was going to be my next question. Um, at what point do we need to kind of take it easy with mm. the needles on our face? I think if you start to alter your natural appearance that you don't really recognize yourself anymore, mm -hmm. um, that's when we need to have, a pr and the doctor has a responsibility there as well. They have to recognize that that is an unnatural look for that person. I think we should definitely still be aiming for the more natural approach where possible. Um, and really about, it's just about making you look your best for that age that you are. Um, but I do think the doctor has a role as well in saying no to patients. A good doctor will do that. So that is that managing expectations or is that more sort of educational? It's a bit of both and I think um, we do have a duty of care to our patients to do the right thing by them and, and tell them when something is not appropriate. Mm. Um, 
and you know sometimes psychological disorders can present with patients you know coming for repeated Botox fillers that they don't need so we have to be aware of the psychological aspect of the patient as well. Dr. Victoria, this is one of my favorite subjects to talk about, so that's exactly why we're not ready to let you go just yet. So please stick around. We have so much more to ask and learn from you. Time for a quick break. After that, we talk to a beauty educator creating awareness about lifestyle and wellness in the digital space. Plus, we've got exclusive interviews and a fitness session that you don't want to miss out.